So around two years ago, I started to learn about Web3. Almost exactly 1.5 years ago, I got my very first full-time offer. I feel any technology that you're trying to learn, be it Web3, AI, full stack, data structures and algorithms can be broken down into three phases. The learning phase, the job phase and the making money phase. In this video, I'll talk about my Web3 journey, my learning phase, how much time did it take, how did I learn Web3, my job phase, how I got my very first offer, what was my very first offer, and my money-making phase, once I learned the technology well, what were the various ways I consulted and worked with various companies to sort of make a little bit more. With that context, let's get right into the video. So rolling the clock back two years ago, February 2022 is when I first heard of Web3. I was working at a Metaverse startup. Metaverses were pretty hot back then. And I thought it's a decent experiment for me to run. And I wanted to try out the technology. It was a combination of a lot of FOMO markets were going up by a lot and a little bit of interest in the underlying technology. And so in one of the hackathons at my company, which was, as I said, a Metaverse company, I built a simple Web3 application, a token gated Metaverse space. After I built it, a lot of people were sort of very happy. It caught the eye of a lot of senior leaders of the company. And it made me realize it's actually not too difficult to learn Web3. I did two things. Number one, I got into a closed community of Solana developers. Number two, I got a grant from the Solana Foundation for like $4,000 to create a video series on Solana. My channel was dead back then. If you go back a few pages, you'll realize there's like a very small series on Solana from two years ago. That was my induction into the Solana ecosystem and more specifically, I would say that was my induction to Web3 generally. During this process, I of course had a mentor who guided me because I had zero experience in Web3 and I had to create a video series on it. By the end of the series, I was fairly confident in Solana development and felt like this was the right point for me to move. Given just this niche knowledge of how to create smart contracts in Solana and do client-side Solana stuff, I started applying to companies. I applied to two companies. Company number one, I'm not going to name anyone because they'll get spammed, was heavily open source. Company number two was heavily open source as well. For company number one, I sent a DM to the founder and it looked like this. Hey, wanted to interview for the position of SDK developer at your company. Brief about me, 2018 CS undergrad, two years at Goldman, one year freelancing and consulting, one year at GatherTown, currently working as a tech lead at Gather. Have built a few app chains on top of Cosmos and have extensive experience in Solana development. I did not have extensive experience. I think that's a little bit of an overestimation. Would love to chat more if the background seems relevant. The thing about 2022 is, or even today I would say, uh, it's very hard to find core Solana developers. Uh, and so it's a very easy pitch. This was enough for me to get an interview. They wanted to expand to Solana. And this was a very conventional interview process. It was a data structures and algorithms round, fairly straightforward. It was a live coding round where I had to use some of their SDKs to build something, fairly straightforward again. And then there was a system design round where I was asked to build a, an ETH indexer. What is an ETH indexer? Basically index the blockchain and you know put everything inside a database, a simple SQL database. Um, fairly common interview problem. I think I did fairly well in all three and they rolled out an offer. It was a pretty generous offer, around 250k base plus like a bunch of stocks, uh, which was almost a 30% bump on my current salary. I said yes, everything was going well. But suddenly another company raised $20 million. This company was Backpack. And I'd heard a lot about the founders and generally the team, very Solana based team. And since I had experience there, and I had 15 days before I was joining this other company. In these 15 days, I had a timeline of these 15 days. I had to contribute extremely heavily to Backpack and there was a slight chance I might get in. Worst case, I would go to the other company. Um, but thankfully, after 10 days of contributing fairly heavily, the founder reached out and you know, it was a fairly easy interview, pretty much no interview. I got selected based off my contributions, which is how most people got into Backpack. If you want a detailed video on how I got in, what were the contributions I made, I've already made a video. You can find it here on the top left. Now I was faced with a dilemma. Uh, backpack comp was slightly lesser, the cash component, uh, but the upside was huge, uh, by which I mean, you know, there wasn't any committed upside, but the bonuses could be very big based on your performance. So I had a choice to make, either go to the first company for 250K base and, you know, 150k equity, that was the offer there, or join Backpack for slightly lesser cash, uh, but a lot of upside if things go well. So September 2022, I joined Backpack and here starts my second phase, learning on the job. I sort of felt like an imposter initially. One of the reasons I joined Backpack was, okay, bhai, I'm probably the dumbest person in the room here. Versus at the other company, I was going to lead Solana integrations over there. Uh, so it was a fairly obvious choice for me to join Backpack, even though the base salary here was slightly lesser. An interesting story here is that 
10 days after I joined, uh, FTX collapsed and and FTX was one of the majority investors in Backpack. A lot of Backpack's investment was in FTX. So suddenly the amount of runway that Backpack had dropped down by a lot. So it became increasingly obvious, at least to me personally, I need to work really hard. Else, you know, my job might be in danger. So the next six months was pretty much a lot of overworking. I worked from India for a bit and then moved to the US, worked there for two months. Um, all of this was leading up to a very big event at Backpack called the NFT Mint. March of 2022, so from September of 2022 to March of 2023 is when I worked a lot on the wallet. Um, and, you know, everyone in the team was pretty much working a lot uh, because there was a very big event that was happening. That event happened. The company got a little bit more liquid because when you do an NFT launch, you pretty much raise some money from retail public, whoever is investing in your NFT. So the runway increased a bit. Um, everyone in the team got some NFT. This was pretty much our bonus now because, you know, every employee in the team got 12 NFTs, but we were in a bear market. The NFTs weren't worth a lot of money. The price of a single NFT plateaued to around $1,500 to $2,000 for around six months. So for around six months, you know, it felt like yeah, yeah, my base salary was 200K. Plus I made a little bit more 30K US dollars in NFTs. So it could have felt like the wrong decision. And that usually happens during bear markets. You lose a lot of conviction because as time goes by, prices go down. There isn't a lot of activity unless you have really strong conviction, which I saw here in, in the founders and other people. It's very hard for you to continue. This was the first six months. And then Backpack went on to build an exchange. So the team pretty much divided into two parts. Uh, I joined the exchange and the goal was to build, you know, cryptocurrency exchange from scratch in the next six months. Here, I wouldn't say a lot of Web3 learning happened. A lot of core finance learning happened for me, how to build an exchange. There are, of course, Web3 parts to this. If you're building a cryptocurrency exchange, you need to index the blockchain. You need to handle deposits and withdrawals. But other than that, it's a lot of standard Web2 problems. So that was pretty much where the next six to seven months went. It was not really remote eventually. It was a lot of working out of Dubai and then eventually moving to Japan because the company was going to headquarter in Japan. So it sort of became like an on-site job, especially if you're working on the exchange. Throughout this journey, even personally for me, it was very hard to predict KR, where will the prices go? Is this going to be a product that, that will be used by people? Is there even a need for a new exchange? But my boss told me once, hey, you know, this is the time when most people go back to their Google and Facebook jobs, you know, leave Web3 forever. And pretty much that thing has stuck with me since hey, whenever a bear happens, which it will, just because we're in a bull currently does not really mean, you know, there won't be another bear market. After so many cycles, it's fairly obvious that, you know, this cycle will sort of keep on continuing because there are legitimate use cases that are coming up now. October, November-ish is when I have completed a year at Backpack. So my equity has vested um, and the markets suddenly go crazy. Um, lads sort of pump from $2,000 to $30,000 uh, at its peak. I think it's at $25,000 right now. And suddenly I look at my wallet in which I had my initial 12 mad lads that every employee in the team got. Plus I had been stacking through the bear and I realized it's a decent amount of money for me to, I wouldn't say retire, but you know, think for a bit where I want to spend my time. It also became fairly obvious to me after working out of Japan for two months, okay, probably cannot stay away from family uh, for such a long time. So after some tough conversations, I thought of switching my company and I would call here the end of stage two, learning on the job. After a year of working in a company in a specific industry with very solid peers, reading through the code bases, having conversations that I wouldn't have had otherwise sort of peaked my learning curve. And I keep repeating this. I think the best way to learn is not build projects on your own, but you know, just join a company with solid engineers and the learning that will happen here will, you know, compound very quickly. Since then, I've been working for another exchange out of Europe. I wouldn't say this was too difficult of an interview. Uh, I knew the founder from TopTal before. They were previously building a gambling website, but eventually pivoted to an exchange. Um, and thankfully, you know, my credentials sort of got me and did not have to interview. And that's been the past six months. I've been coding a little bit more on the side because this is actually a great time to make money in Solana. So I've been writing a lot of ad hoc scripts for crypto whales and myself to, you know, uh, farm a lot of airdrops. We don't know what that means. It's fine. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much what I've been doing for the past six months. If I wasn't in a job, I think this would have been a great time to consult as a Solana engineer. I think a lot of people want like a lot of standard things built and are willing to pay top dollar for it because this is the time to make a lot of money. Um, uh, a few good examples here are a lot of token launches that are happening. Uh, a lot of times these token launches are being done by people who are not very technical. So sometimes they'll pay you like a decent chunk of the initial token supply or, you know, sometimes $10,000 a day for, you know, a basic token launch pad. So if I had the time um, and a lot of people are doing this, I would spend my time doing that. Um, that's pretty much it. I think that's how you can learn any technology. Uh, a few 
call outs um i think i got very lucky with the initial team that i joined um and with you know the, the collection doing so well i can't say you'll always get outsized outcomes but if you choose the right team for example nvidia is a great example here okay it's probably one of the most boring companies to join in 2013 2014 2018 but if you were there if you had conviction ki ha ai will do well and then eventually gpus will do well you would have made a decent amount on your stocks that ended up being true here for nfts so there's a little bit of luck involved but whatever company you join generally consider equity to be zero you might get lucky but you know in very small use cases so make sure your base salary is what you really aim for um another advice here is it's very easy to negotiate equity slash token slash uh nft allocations during a bear because you know there aren't a lot of solid engineers companies don't have money so they'll give you a lot of nfts or uh tokens that does not happen during a bull during a bull companies are making a lot of money and they want solid engineers pay them top dollar and the nft prices are already very high the token prices are already very high so there's a good chance they go down over the next few months so if there's one learning from this video if there's a bear market it's probably the best time to join especially as you know someone who does not know much about the industry because during a bull you know there are solid engineers in this niche but during a bear everyone goes back to their fang jobs so even as a mediocre slash good engineer you can get into a company get a decent you know to equity allocation which might become worth a lot during a bull a lot of these are dots you can only connect in hindsight of course it was impossible to connect the dots looking forward when i was in college but it was very very clear looking backwards 10 years later again you can't connect the dots looking forward you can only connect them looking backwards so you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future i think if you would have asked me 8 months ago or anyone even back back 8 months ago no one could have predicted ke the nft would have you know blown up so much and every employee's compensation would blow up by almost half a million dollars and no one can predict this it could go down as quickly i would never sell you know the 12 lads that was that were initially allocated to me with that hopefully there was decent motivation to at least start to learn about web3 and you know get your hands dirty if not web3 ai a different niche the point is if you learn about it well for 6 months if you join the right team you can pretty much call yourself a native of that industry in around 2 years and if you are lucky and at the right place at the right time might make a small fortune as well with that let's end it i'll see you guys in the next one bye bye